Listen, I want to thank you all for being here today. I've got a word from the Lord. I, I do every week, I pray. Uh, but I really, I really want to get this word in your spirit. I want to thank all those also. I, I want to take time before I minister to thank all those who are watching us on Facebook, our church website, YouTube, our church app, and all those at Telecane Detention Center. We're at the jail this morning. Isn't that, isn't that good? Amen. So let's put our hands together and thank God for our online church family. Amen. Now listen, online, I want y'all lean in just for a little bit, all right? It's, that's temporary. We can't wait to get you in the house. Amen. Because there ain't no hope, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party in God's house. Amen. And I love online, but watch this. It's, it's different. It's different. You need to be in God's house. If you're healthy and you're able, you need to be in God's house. Somebody say amen, preach. You preach it really good this morning. Amen. Need to be in house. But listen, here, here's what I want to give you. I want to, I want to go part four on the sermon series that we're calling Unleash. Now, I know it's Mother's Day. I prayed. I said, Lord, it's Mother's Day. He's like, I know. And I'm like, God, I, I, aren't I supposed to have a, like a Mother's Day sermon if I tell you to? So I think God, I know God speaks. But I felt like I needed to stay in this vein, especially today for setting us up for what's getting ready to happen next week. Now, listen to me. Clay Dyer is going to be here next Sunday. You do not. Listen to me. You say, you think you're having a bad day. Y'all show up, he don't have no legs, no arms, and he won a bass tournament. Go figure that one out. So listen, I, I'm just telling you, next Sunday is a, you have to, you need to be here. You need, we got two services, one at 8 and one at 1030. Please pick one of them. Please pick one of them. And if you, you say, well, Brother Brian's not preaching, I'm not going to be there. Well, you're, you might as well leave now. Because here's the bottom line, if you're here for Brother Brian... You're here for the wrong read. You'd already missed the Holy Ghost. So we're we, we going to preach. We're going to preach. Unleash part four. So if you don't mind, help me preach today. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see God all over you today. I see God. Come on, talk to me today. Talk to me. I see God all over you today. All over you today. Yeah. Yeah. Say, you, say you've got the, I can't help it. Say, man. Yeah. I, I can't help but to worship him today. Yeah. So I want y'all to listen to this. Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Hey, y'all are good today. Wow. Yeah, just happy and excited. I love preaching at a happy house. That people love each other, love God, love the Holy Ghost, and let, him, let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost. Yeah, unleashed means to be released. To be released. And I love this because we need to be released. And I know that you're in God's house, you're at a safe place, but watch this. God wants to do more in your life. He wants to continue to release you. Because if we're not careful, we'll get stagnant right where we're at. God's saying, I want to unrestrain you. I want to set you free. Watch. Not for you, but for his kingdom. For his kingdom. So God says, I want to release you. I want to unrestrain you. I want to set you free for a purpose. How many of y'all know it's for the kingdom and not you? Not the kingdom, but the kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want y'all to listen to this passage. I'm going to teach. I'm going to lay a foundation. And then we'll preach here in just a minute, all right? But I've got to lay a good foundation for you. Listen to me. You were created on purpose. I'm going to say it again. That messed up eyebrow you got. <laughs> that hair that does, won't do good on Sunday. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Your, your, your fingernails, that, they won't grow because you bite them all the time. Listen, I'm just telling y'all. God knows everything about you. And I know we say this loosely. We say this lightly. But God knows the amount of hair up on your head, Matthew chapter 10. Listen, there is a purpose. God, I got to, God created me and he created you and all of us in this room for a purpose. You were not an accident. You were not an accident. You were not a mistake. God did not have a Britney Spears moment and say, oops, when you was born. He did not. Listen, God knew the date, the hour, the time that you was going to be born. He knows exactly what's going through your mind right now, which is scary for some. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows everything about you right now. He knows five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years. I feel he knows everything. I'm glad I got a God that's in control. Come on, you got to get peace in your life today. He's in control. Everything that happens, God says, I knew that. I knew that. But listen to me very carefully. We are God's representatives. Y'all understand what I'm preaching today. God created you on purpose for a purpose. What is the purpose for his kingdom? For his kingdom. His kingdom. We are heaven's representatives here on earth. Y'all understand this? 
Do you understand your assignment? That you're just not kumbaya, passing through? God's got a purpose for you, watch, even here right now. If you leave the same way you walked in, I tell you all this all the time, it's your own bad fault. Because God is here. He's got a purpose for his spirit. God does not show up to entertain. He does not show up to say, um, how are you feeling today? He shows up today. He's walking down this aisle. He's walking down this aisle. He's walking down this aisle. Can you feel him? Do you know he's here? Listen, we must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. You say, Brian, you talk about the Holy Spirit a lot. I said, yeah, you know why? Because I'm telling you, we talk about God, we talk about Jesus, but for some odd reason, we're scared to death of the Holy Spirit, and he's a good father. He is gentle. He loves you. And he gets the bad rep about everything. He shows up and people judge him. And so I'm just telling you today, listen to me very carefully. We've got to be led by the Holy Spirit of God and his anointing. His anointing. And here's what I'm saying. If God don't show up today, listen to me very carefully because that's going to be back on me and you. Back on me and you. If, he, if God don't show up today, it's our fault. Preacher, preacher, I think I will. So here's what I'm saying. If we don't see signs, wonders, and miracles today, it's our fault. You say, Brian, that's putting a lot on the people. But we should have so much Jesus in our life that people would be drawn to his kingdom. Do y'all understand the power of God that is in our lives today? Do y'all understand who owns this church? Do you understand who lives, who takes a residence inside of you? I'm telling y'all, listen to me. We are missing the mark. And God's wanting so much more. So much more for me and you. Elkhorn, we have not arrived. Do I know that God's here? Absolutely. Do I know his presence is here? Absolutely. But watch this. We have not arrived. There's so much more that we need to attain from Jesus Christ. So listen, I'm telling you this in Jesus Christ's name. I'm praying. I'm praying to see a New Testament church lived out here on earth. And I'm looking at her right now. Every one of y'all watch it say, neighbors say, tag, you're it. Come on, tell somebody else who ain't even paying no attention. Tag, you it. You it. You it. You it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. We're all it. We're all it. Not lit, it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> holy laughter, get ready to come up in his church. Uh, laughter's good. And we should be the most happiest, joyful people in the whole wide world. I, I'm happy this morning. My little grandson Walker looks up and he says, Are you happy? You happy? And so I have to say, Yeah, I'm happy. I said, Walker, are you happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. Listen, we have the same Holy Spirit. I'm, I know this seems like redundant. I know that y'all know this. But at some point in the church's life, we've got to let it drop 16. we got to let it drop 16. 16 inches will either send you to heaven or send you to hell. 16 inches will either allow you to walk on water or make you stay in the boat. 16 inches means a lot in this life down here. And I'm praying in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that today that we go from our, from our head to our heart. That we let it drop down into our hearts and we get what I'm getting ready to tell you. We've got the same Holy Ghost. I know we don't believe this, but I'm telling you the same Holy Spirit that was in Peter, James, John, Mary, and Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, we've got that in us today. Do y'all understand what I'm preaching? Say, this is yes, and this is like, I don't know. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. Jesus said these words, and I've quoted it, and I'm going to keep quoting it until the horn sounds, or y'all bury me. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ said, greater works. Greater works. We will do than what he did. Come on, preacher. You telling me that, that he said that? He said that. John chapter 14, verse 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because here's what I'm saying. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll sit back and we'll allow something else to happen and to make us sit still. So how are we going to do greater works? I, I couldn't wait to preach this. 
How? Because I ask myself, when I'm studying, I'm like, Brian, come on now. Listen, how are you going to do greater works than Jesus Christ? How are we going to do greater works than Jesus Christ? How are we going to do it? So I'm glad y'all asked. I can't wait to give you all this. Here's the answer. How are we going to do greater works than Jesus did when he walked here on the earth? Y'all ready for this? And it's so simple, but sometimes you got to go back to the basics. Everybody's wanting a big study on Revelation and eschatology. But here's what I'm telling you. In Jesus Christ's name, what you're holding in your hand is your answer. Listen to me. Y'all ready? All right, here we go. We're going to line up with the Word of God. Now, y'all, y'all missed a praise break right there. But it's okay, because listen to me. We're going to follow. We're not just going to read. We're going to follow the Word of God. Yeah, amen. We're going to put all of our faith, all of our trust, all of our works, all of our action, all of our preaching, all of our singing, everything that we've got, we need to put back in the Word of God. Somebody say amen. We got to put it back in the Word of God. Somebody say amen. There's a great, this time there's a good Samaritan. He got to Jesus Christ and he said these words, hey, my daughter's sick. He said these words. He said, well, you come heal my daughter. Dad, I love this. But Jesus said these words. He said, no. He said, uh, I'm, I'll be there later on. I'm, I'm on my way. And the centurion said these words. It kind of messed me up this week, Mike. He said these words. He said, listen, um, I'm not asking you to follow me there. I'm just asking you, I'm just asking you to say the word, send the word, hey, send the word, send the word, send the word. Because I know when Jesus speaks the word, whatever's dead will stand back up. Whatever is lost will be saved. Y'all help me. I'm telling you right now, people, like, I, I praise God that you can lay hands on people. I praise God that we can pray for people. But I'm telling you the greatest answer that in our life you're holding it in your hand right now. It's called the B-I-B-L-E. We got to get back to the good old basics of the Bible. The Bible will do the work of the Bible by itself. Just send the word. Just send the word. Just send the word. Just say it. And just say it. Just decree it. Amen. Just decree it. You got lost people in your family? God. I decree they're going to be saved, born again, on their way to heaven. God, I know they're living like Jerry Springer Live right now. But God, in Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we're calling them back to you. Yeah, God, with all these drugs and all these things that's going on in South Central. No more death. No more death. No more death. And I'm preaching what I'm, I'm telling you what God gave me. What sometimes we think we got to be there. And God said, if you'll just decree it, I'll do it. Just decree it. Just decree it. You say, Brian, you're great. No, I'm telling you, listen to me. 24 years of ministry. I'm telling you, decree it. I'm telling you, mama, daddy, decree it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Decree it. We got we to gotta start decreeing this stuff. We got to quit talking with, with CNN and ABC and NBC, all the news and all the affiliations of the news. I've got the greatest news in my hand, and it's called the Bible. I'm telling y'all truth today. Whew, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the Word of God will do the work of God. Listen to me. The Word of God. Everybody say, the Word of God will do the work of God. You know who I think a lot of time blocks it? Look at me. I think we, a lot of times... Or blessing blockers. God says, listen, all you got to do. See, this is so, I'm sitting here going right now, even in my flesh, I'm sitting here going, Brian, God, this is so elementary. But really it's not because I'm telling you that the Bible is the answer for the government. Huh. The, the Bible is the answer for your marriage. The Bible is the answer to ways that we lead this church. Brian Rafferty's not your answer. Deacons are not your answer. People are not your answer. But I got an answer and his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm telling y'all, if we start following the Bible, sounds so simple, don't it? I know I'm, I'm sitting here batting my flesh right now, Joey. Yeah, my flesh, like the flesh is over here and God's over here. Flesh sitting there going, they ain't listening. Why are you praying? That's elementary. That's a vacation Bible school. And God's sitting there going, I'm, I'm going to wait till they do it. 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 Just declare my word. Just declare my word. I, I am the Lord thy God. I will do what you ask. I will. Yeah, so, 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 so. What if I told you this? Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, 
Alignment determines assignment. Feel the Holy Ghost. How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Don't be ashamed of Him. Raise, if you feel the Holy Spirit, raise your hand. If you believe you're at the right church at the right time, I want you to raise your hand. If you believe that God has already spoken a word deep down in your spirit, I want you to raise your hand. If you know that God is King of kings and Lord of lords, He's the great I Am. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's coming back again. I want you to give Him praise here today. We are not going to stop. We're not going to stop until we plunder hell and populate heaven. I'm telling y'all, come on, youth, give him a praise in this house. Woo! Hey! Hey, yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You say, Brian, I ain't standing. I ain't talking to you then. Alignment determines assignment. Alignment determines assignment. Alignment determines assignment. So listen to this. It was what God spoke to me. If you're out of alignment, not with politics, not, not, not with bylaws. If you're out of alignment with the word of God. Are y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Listen, if you're out of alignment with the word of God, your life, your ministry, your family, your calling, your church, everything will be out of balance. One of the worst things I hate doing is driving an out of balance vehicle. It'll wear you out. You, you slow down so it won't wibble wobble. You'll kick it up really fast so it won't wibble wobble on you. You'll do everything that you can to avoid the wobble. I'm preaching really good. It's going, so I don't know where it's going. It's going somewhere. Sometimes you got to wobble till you gobble. I don't know, but we're going to do something. The alignment determines the assignment. But listen to me. But if you're, listen, if you're in alignment with the Word of God, you're following Jesus. You may not understand it. Listen, you, we, we will never figure out everything in this Bible. If it did, you have to trust Him. You have to be obedient to Him. You have to follow Him. And listen, a lot of lessons, I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. A lot of lessons that we learn is when we're walking. As we go, we learn. Y'all hear me? I didn't know what it was like being married. Tell me, didn't and now as we're walking this journey together, and I didn't know what it was like to be a pastor. But as you walk, mm, as you step, the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. As you step, I promise you, you'll learn. And listen to me, I'm on the word. We got to give people space and room to grow. Y'all hear me? We, we act like everybody is just like you. I hope not. I hope not. But listen to me very carefully. As you step, you'll learn. Come on. As you step, we'll learn. We'll grow together. We're a whole lot stronger today than we was back in 2008 when I started. I'm stronger as your pastor today. Because why? There's sometimes along the path I have fallen down. There's sometimes along the path I have messed up royally. And everybody say amen. I have messed up. Well, and you had to. We all have. But here's the deal. We've got to give people space and give people room that when they mess up, don't judge them. Pick them up. Pick them up. Pick them up. So let me give you an example. Everybody say alignment determines assignment. If you're al aligned with the word of God. That's when people who are against you, they better be careful. Not, not because you're a good person or, or what side of the track she was born on. It's because you are aligned with the word of God. When you are aligned with the word of God and the enemy on the outside is trying to stop, hinder, or quench what God is doing on the inside. That is a dangerous place to be as somebody's enemy. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my people no harm. So let me give you an example to this alignment. So I have a pastor friend who pastors a church around 5,000 people. And uh, he is, he's one of these type of friends that can rub you wrong and uh, whip you with the Holy Spirit and make you like it. So I called my pastor friend and I, I wrote this down in my notes. I want to stay close to this because he's watching today. So I told him, I said, I need permission to share what I'm getting ready to share. I called him and I said, I need some advice. 
I, I need some godly counsel from you. And I, he said these words. Um, have you read the book that I gave you? And I said back to him, and I was ashamed. I said, you talking about the book that you gave me about a year ago? And he said, yeah, that book. That book. And I said, um, I can't lie. No, I've not, I've not read it. I hadn't got around to reading it yet. And the pastor said these words that stuck out in my spirit. And this is what got me to the conclusion where I'm at today. This, this fed off each other. I knew you were going to eventually be at the place someday in your life. Someday in your ministry, someday in your marriage, someday, I knew you was eventually going to be at this place someday. And I've already been there. Listen to this. This is what he said. I've already been there. So I gave you what I knew you would need. Whoa, can I preach on this? So man, when he said that, I went back to my notes. And I talked to him this week and he said these words. Did you remind the people? Whew. Mm. That whatever you're going through is in the book that I gave you. And he said these words. Call me back after you read the book. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is good. Because now let me piggyback off that. You know, sometimes we pray and ask God questions like, God, what do I need to do about this? God, what do I need to do about that? God, why do I feel this way? Why is people turn their backs on me? Why is my children acting the way they're acting? God, why has fear paralyzed me? Y'all, are y'all hear, y'all hearing me this morning? What's wrong with the church? What's wrong with me? We ask God a thousand questions. God, God, God. And he's like this. I love you, but have you read the book? Have you read the book that I gave you? Oh, help me, somebody. Come on, you got to dust the book off. You got to get the book back off the shelf. You got to read the book, hallelujah, until the book can read you. Who oh, I'm telling you, he said, I gave you a book. And, church, every, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Everything we need is in the book. I stick to that. Every answer that you need is in the book. The problem with the churches is in the book. Your marriages is in the book. The government is in the book. How we should live. How we should act. How we should love. My question to you, have you read... The book. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, it's in the book. It's in the book. Everybody say, it's in the book. Come on, the rest of you say, it's in the book. It's in the book. It's in the book. So simple. But when's the last time you read the book? Listen to me. What if you, what if you read the Bible the way you eat? Or what if, you, what if you ate the way you read the Bible? You talk about a slim fast. You talk about the best diet plan in the world. I got it right here today. And it's free. I'm a millionaire and don't even know it. Yeah, I'm a millionaire and don't even know it. So listen to this. Everybody say it's in the book. Everybody say, look, your marriage, the lessons to your marriage is in the book. I praise God for psychiatrists. I praise God for counselors. But if they are not pointing you to the leave, everything you need is in the book. I'm going to say it again till y'all get everything you need, I need is in the. Yeah, a kid got that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm being honest, a kid's got that. Yeah, I'll take that kid. So I want them to put this up here because, man, I, I was doing this sermon. It was like God was just downloading, downloading, downloading. I got to give this to you. And this is so, so true. And I want y'all to chew on this. You don't got to clap. I just want you to chew on this. Listen, here's what I know to be true. The way you live and the way you love, uh-oh, determines if you have read the book, the Bible. Why is people mean? They ain't read the book. Why is this world acting the way they're acting? They ain't read the book. 
There's no way you can get in the presence of God and read his, read his love letter and leave mad. There is no way, there is no way that you can be mean-spirited, cruel, if you've read the book. Come on, somebody. Yeah, so what if, what if the way you live and the way that you love, it is determined if you have read the book, the Bible. So I leave, I'm going to leave you with two things. But before I do that, God just reminded me about something. Uh, and I feel like I need to share this. I know this is not right where it needs to probably go. But it is because God just reminded me of it. So last, two Wednesdays ago, I was here at the church and we were doing a, a lesson. I had a lady to approach me. And she said, Brian, i got to share a story with you. And this story has just resonated, Bobby, in my spirit and in my heart. And I cannot get away from this. This lady is working a walk that is coming up. And there's a lady on this walk with her that is legally blind. She can't see. She's legally blind. So this lady that goes to church here, and she's here this morning. And she said these words. She said, I went up to this lady and I told her. I said, I'm going to pray that God will, will give you your sight back. I'm going to pray that God will completely heal you and take all the blindness away from you out of your life. But Courtney, listen to this. It's the first time I've ever heard anything like this. This shook me up. Because I, I got under conviction when she told me her answer. Here's what she said. If, if by me getting my sight back hinders my walk with God, I'd rather stay blind. Hey, I'm just telling you that right there is a woman of God. And I got under conviction. I got under conviction. I really did. We are so blessed in here. God said, when was the last time you gave me praise that you could see out of your right eye and your left eye? When's the last time that you stood up on your two legs that I gave you and I put under you? And then when's the last time you opened your mouth and you could freely give me praise? I'd rather stay blind. I'll chew on that one. So easy. Lord, I'll serve you all the days of my life until you're blind. Corey Boone said these words. The worst thing. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me. Hold on. The worst thing than being blind is being able to see without a vision. Man, God is preaching here today. Ah, well, can you still worship? Listen, y'all realize how blessed, how free we are in this house. And you're worried about what somebody else is going to think, how you worship, how you're going to look. I don't care no more. I stopped by 3145 Elkhorn Road to give him praise this morning. It don't matter what y'all think. It don't matter. I'm just telling you, he's been way too good. Just a telling you. Telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Got a call this morning. A 42-year-old lady just died. 42, 42, 42. Whew. Ooh, boy, you know when God's up in the house. So... I'll leave you with this. Two things. God is calling you and equipping you and preparing you according to his purpose. Listen to me. Everybody wants to be the potter. Nobody wants to be the clay. I'm telling you, there's one potter. His name is Jesus Christ. And listen, this is my story. I'm standing on the word of God. Every word in that Bible is true. It is yes. It is amen. It still works today. If it worked for Peter, James, and John, it'll work for Brian. And it'll work for you. Y'all got to believe that. Listen, it takes more than just saying, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Faith without works is. All right. God is calling you, equipping you, and preparing you according to his purpose. And number two. It's the second thing I want to drop down in you. Whew. What's down in the well will come up in the bucket. Uh, why do people act the way they act? Here's why. <laughs> Whatever's in the bucket is going to come out. Jim, that's right. Whatever's in the bucket is going to come out. Whatever's in the bucket 
Because watch, this world is not our home. We're going to face sickness. We're going to face death. We're going to face pressure. We're going to face it. Y'all look at me. We're going to face it. But ever how you deal with it is whatever's in the bucket. Come on, somebody. Whatever's deep down in your spirit. How come some people can be on their deathbed and they can look up to heaven and say, God, I commend my spirit unto thee. Take me, Lord. It's in the bucket. I had three funerals two weeks ago, one week. All ages, all ages, all ages. One year, I buried five teenagers in one year. Five. I was their youth pastor. It's real. Listen to me. If you don't hear anything else I preach, why should we worship? Because he's real. We act like we're going to live forever down here. And I'm telling you, today could be somebody's last day. Is somebody sitting beside you? To, you? You are so convincing today that God is real. Do they want what you got? Here's what I'm asking myself and I'm asking you. Praise team, you guys come. It's for this church. Here we go, y'all ready? So simple. Let's follow the book. Y'all want a better life? Follow the book. You want a better marriage? Follow the book. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? With the evidence of the Spirit working through you, follow the book. Follow the book. My question, are you, listen, are you, are you following the book? Right now, listen, you, you, you look inside you. We, we're the masters. We got our PhD knowing about somebody else. If somebody else would follow the book, if somebody else would get forgiven, if somebody else would repent, if somebody else would come to the altar. I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to Brian Rafferty this morning. I'm talking to Austin Hash this morning. Hallelujah. It's in the book. It's in the book. Somebody done you bad? How does God tell you to act and react? It's in the book. We won't talk about them. We won't get on the phone and tell Beulah her four no more. We want the world to know how people have treated us. How they treat your daddy, your king, your Jesus. And for some reason, Thad, he can look off and they would spit on him. Over 600 people spit on him. Put a spear in his side. Put a crown of thorns on his head. This is real, by the way. They even put him in a borrowed tomb. And Mark, for some reason, some reason, some reason. Well, they've done me bad. They've not nailed you to the cross yet. They've not put a spear in your side yet. Some reason. But God. Whew. I don't know how he did it. We were so undeserving. But for some reason. He looked over. He said, Father, see, y'all know the verse. It's in the book. But are you following it? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. If they knew who I really was. <laughs> if they knew in three days I'm getting back up. Instead of piercing me, they're probably bowing down. Are y'all following? Or are we? My, my granny always told me, Brian Keith, you better be careful when you point. Y'all know the old story. You got three coming <laughs> back at you. Granny told truth. Are you living a life according to the book? I did not say according to the 2001 Baptist Faith and Message. They wrote that according to the. Y'all want me to show y'all something cray cray? <laughs> yeah, I love kids, man. Listen, when your life and my life is said and done, we'll all be judged according to the. So I'm going to read this to y'all then. Y'all know it. Revelation 
chapter 22, verse 7. I'm going to go down to verse 18 through 20. Y'all give me about five more minutes. It's only 11 at laughter. So check this out. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. And I'm going to go down to verse 18 through 21. It says these words crazy. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy, of the prophecy written in this book. Verse 18 through 21. I warn everyone. I did not write this. John the Apostle wrote it. The Holy Spirit working through him. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy in this book. He says, I warn you. If anyone adds anything to them. One translation said, if you add or you take away. Watch. God will add to that person the plague described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy. God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life in that holy city. Which is described in this book. Verse 20. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Here's what he says. Here's my response. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. And amen. And amen. I get this question a thousand times. We're getting ready to start a revelation study here on Wednesday nights. Will anybody be saved when the rapture takes place? Oh, yeah, there will be. But watch. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Let me teach y'all. This is just a pre-service for revelation. If you have heard the gospel, like here today, if you have heard the gospel and you're sitting here today and you're lost you're undone and you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not get another chance to be saved. Y'all better lean in and you better listen to this pastor. The only ones that will be saved is the ones who have never heard the gospel or did not understand the gospel. There are people still in this world that have never heard the gospel or the name of Jesus Christ. We live in, we live in Mayberry. This is the Bible Belt. Everybody. No, no, no. Listen to me, sir. Ma'am, listen to me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 says these words. If you have heard the gospel and you reject it, if that horn sounds, sir, ma'am, if that horn sounds, you will not get a second chance. And even the ones who have not heard it and or didn't understand it, the only way they're going to be saved is if they lose their head. I'm begging churches today, listen, while we got a chance to worship, <laughs> we better worship. Because I believe with all my heart, Brother Terry, we say this all the time, Gabriel's lips are on the trumpet. All he's waiting for is for Daddy God to say, go get my people, go get my church. I'm asking y'all today, do you believe the book? Do you believe every word in that book? Even the things that nobody wants to talk about, do you believe the book? So I'm going to ask you, as we wind this down and as we land this plane, here's the last thing I want to tell you. Brian, one old pastor said it like this. My old pastor said it like this. Bible. Bible. Here it is. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Y'all understand that book that you're holding in your hand, you'll be judged by. Y'all, I got to be clear on this because, listen, we got a lot of people that think they're a good person. There are good people in hell. There are Baptists, Pentecostal, Methodists, Episcopalians. Hell's full of them. I'm asking you today, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know that you know that you know that you know that you know? See, Brian, that's all you talk about. That's all that matters. We can have a church of 925. But if the Holy Ghost don't show up, all we're doing is singing three or four songs. We're going to preach a 25, 35, 45 minute sermon. And we're going to go home and nothing changed. But if God shows up working through the Holy Ghost, everything changes. The atmosphere changes. Your heart changes. Your mind changes. Everything will change. You can't hate nobody. 
You love the Muslims. You love them. You love them. You love them. I pray the whole world gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Preach that, girl. If God can use little kids like this on this front row, going, yeah, that's right. I love that. No wonder God says, hinder not my children to come unto me. It'd be best for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and you thrown into an ocean than you to hinder one of my children to come unto me. Woo! Basic instructions before leaving earth. Have you read the book? Do you know the book? When COVID comes at you, what does God say? God don't give you the spirit of fear. He gives you the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Do you know the book? Do you know the book? Do you know the book? So I'm asking y'all today, some of y'all just need to come to this old altar and say, God, it's been a while since I read the book. Listen, we'll help you. It's time for the church to be discipled. It is time for the church to have faith. Because I'm telling you, time is drawing nigh, thus saith the Lord. So, Father God, I've preached your word. I've done exactly what you've told me to do. God, I pray for these precious people. That God, we would say, I go to church. No, they'll say, I am the church. So, Lord, have your way right now from the back to the front, side to side, top to bottom. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We already know you're here. We already know you're here. God, I pray today, God, somebody here today, Lord, is sick in their body. God, you said in James chapter 5 that if they would come to the, to the elders of the church, that God, if they would anoint their head with oil, that God, you would heal them. If they confess it, Lord, they, you would heal them. So God, today, I don't know if it's diabetes. I don't know if it's cancer. I don't know what it is to God. But Lord, I'm believing today that God, we're going to be a blessed people, a healed people, a saved people. So God, have your way from this side all the way over. Have your way in this place, God. Right now, right now, God. Right now, God, call your people. Call your people. Call your people. Call your people, Lord Jesus. Call your people. Those who are running from God, it's time to come home. Yeah, amen? It's time to come home. Come on. You may be the prodigal. You may be eating with the pigs. But you got a father standing at the door waiting for you to come home. So Father God, have your way in this church. May we stand on the holy word of God. In Jesus' name and all God's people say it.